we've actually been involved right from the very beginning. Uh, Michael came and saw us and wanted to do some experiments and we basically set up a bit of a friendship and got started from there. So, a long time. Originally, we saw it as a bit of a soil conditioner. And that's because there wasn't really a, a word for what it did. But over the years, we've appreciated the fact that it's really the very base of getting your biological system cracking on your farm. And once that gets wound up, um, amazing things happen. Yeah, we get uh, different soil temperatures, our soil sponge is amazing. We hold on to water now for weeks and weeks, whereas once upon a time, if we didn't get rain in 10 days, it was a drought here. We're on raw pumice and we've completely changed that structure now. It's quite amazing. This year we had a, a drought for a month and the farm was green right the way through. And uh, when we came here, it would have been absolutely brown, so dead. It's allowed us to, to put less money into inputs, basically. Uh, our inputs that we use now, including the vermicast, you do it once and it doesn't matter if it's raining or sunny or whatever, it, it keeps doing its job. It, it's not like you have to go out on a Saturday afternoon and put some urea on. We don't, we don't worry about that. This farm's had no urea for 15 years. And um, if you look around, it's, it's, you can get up on the hill and it doesn't look any different from any other farm around the place. We started off putting about a tonne to the hectare on and, and sort of, because we didn't know what it was. Um, but now we regularly put on eight tonnes per annum per hectare and uh, we see the benefits. We actually get a, a nitrogen effect with it as well. So you put it on, the farm greens up a bit and yeah, but it's, uh, it's the soil structure that's um, benefiting immensely from it. We soil test every two years and in two years we got a 25% increase in our organic matter in the soil and it's unheard of. A big advantage is you don't have to worry if we could go out and put it on that paddock this afternoon the cows could go and eat the, the grass tonight. It's, it's not toxic, it's just <laughs> the wind rattles it down to the bottom and it doesn't stick there as a, as a toxic product, the cows can eat it. Um, it's very, very easy to put on, it's not, it doesn't smell, it, you can put it in a big pile and the rain can rain on it and next week you just go and um, spread it out. It's, uh, it's, it's a very, very easy product to, to handle. It's just that leap of faith first and once they've done it, they won't be working on faith anymore. You, you see the results, you feel the results under your feet. Our um, uh, animal health bill is minute, minute. We just, we don't get sore feet, we don't get all sorts of stuff. There's just so many um, things happen. We used to get probably a dozen cases of yonis a year. Uh, two or three years after we started using vermicast, we now get none now. Um, and it's, 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 it's all to do with what's happening on the ground. We don't, we don't get uh, eczema anymore. Um, the, the ground is supporting enough bacteria and, and fungi that just eat all the, all the, uh, the, the, the parts that, that affect you for eczema. You know? So they're just not there. <laughs> they eat them up. <laughs> you look in the bottom of our sward, there is no, there is no dirty, rubbishy old grass full of um, bad bugs because uh, the worms eat it all and yeah, it's, it's quite different. We had tried a, uh, a product made by Balance which is called BioShield which isn't on the market anymore because it wasn't successful because the bacteria they were injecting into the zeolite which is a, a, um, a, a, a what should I say, a very clean rock, um, it, it didn't survive and so it never got a chance to work properly but worms, their digestive system works on this Bacillus bacteria and when they excrete the vermicast the, the Bacillus is taken up by the grass grub and it just blows them to bits, kills them and we discovered it by accident. We, 
we fenced the paddock in half that was had come out of pine trees. Year four, it was absolutely decimated with grass grub. Put a fence down the middle to put it into two paddocks. Got some vermicast on it, and then we had really rotten weather for a week, 10 days. Went back, and where we put the vermicast, the grass grub were all dead, and the grass was growing again. And on the other side of the fence, like a meter inside, the grass grub was still there in their thousands. That was absolutely amazing. That was over, over 10 days basically sorted out the grass scrub. <laughs> it was amazing. Because, I mean, this, this whole country around here, they use DDT. Mm. And this farm never got DDT on it because the fellow who owned it was too poor to afford it. But all the other farms around here were rehab farms, government farms, and they put all the DDT on. And it's still in the pasture now, many, many years later. A lot of people can't graze their animals in the winter because they they get it in, the, in their body. It was a real big thing here, grass grub. Our production has stayed pretty constant since we changed to, to organic. And, and I, so I'll mention here that our philosophy with organic is it's a marketing tool. It's not the way we farm. We farm biologically, but that's come to us over the years. We've realised that. So we used to put about 200 kgs of of N on in the form of, of uh, urea. We used to put on a superphosphate. Um, we don't put those on, haven't for 15 years, like I said before, but we still use things like sulfur and magnesium and, and um, uh, lime and, and so on. So the, the next products, we still top the farm up with that. You, you can't take things out without putting some back, but our inputs are a lot, lot less. So, and I was telling you before, with those soil tests. Um, we now herbage and soil tests to get the true picture of what our farm's growing. And the soil tests, if you showed them to the neighbour, he'd be alarmed. Um, and yet the herbage tests are giving the, the animals top, top of the line feed. It's right up the top of the scale, all the, all the minerals and vitamins and, and the megajoules of energy and the whole thing. Our Olsen P levels, we used to try and get 30, 35 here. Um, most farmers like to farm around about 40 um, Olsen P level of 40. We have Olsen P levels of 14. And yet our herbage tests are at the top of the scale. Some of them are off the scale. So, yeah. And I mean, we now grow uh, clover and stuff all year round. And uh, that just didn't used to happen. It's commonly called the soil sponge. And so what you've got to do is you've got to create, in your pasture, you've got to, you're under your foot, you've got to create uh, a medium that can hold on to the water. So when it rains, it doesn't all just run away or into the creek, it stays in there like a big sponge. And to do that, you've got to have a lot of um, bacteria and fungi and worms and all sorts of things making, you know, making holes through everything. And the water goes in, and it sits in there and and so what you do is you have a big rain event and especially now with the climate change things that are that are happening um, you were getting bigger rain events and but bigger gaps in between uh, where there is no rain and so you've got to hold on to that rain and i was at a thing the other day niwa made this very clear and the people at the table i was sitting at said oh well we're going to have to get some more ponds and save the water and i said but then you're going to have to pump it back on the paddock. The easy way is to get the paddock to hold on to it to start with, and you can do that. And it's, it, it takes a few years, but the sooner you start, the better it's gonna be. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of litres of water that you can hold on to. That's helped us create the medium that we want. So it, it, it starts off giving the life forms that you want in the ground a home to move into and get started on. I just think um, it's like most things, if you can keep your business um, transparent and farmers tend to understand and, and, and relate to, to honesty and no nonsense as a whole product, it's very, very beneficial. 
and um, providing um, it can be um, purchased at a, at, a, at a reasonable cost um, and there's, there's no detriment to the land. I, I, I think it's got a huge future, huge. We're lucky in a sense uh, that we, we're far enough away from a lot of the toxicity in the, in the world. It has its downside too because we've got to send stuff a long way to get it there. Um, but I, I believe with, with something like Mainoki and those sort of processes, we can be self-sufficient in our nutrient inputs. Um, it's, it's recycling a very good product.